What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Nash and Arnold Z. Today is the same as the last day we filmed because I was away in Montana doing some snowboarding, shredding the gnar. Um, I don't know if anybody out there snowboards, but if you do, go to Whitefish. Best conditions I've ever had, multiple years in a row. Uh, just as an aside, it's awesome. Go check it out, go shred. Um, managed to survive back-to-back -back days of snowboarding, training, snowboarding again, and then training again. Uh, somehow I'm here in one piece. I slept 12 hours one night, I think that helped. Um, again, if anybody out there can do that, I recommend it. Sleep 12 hours, you'll feel like a brand new person. Let's get into training today. Basically, uh, today was my comp day. So I did some comp squats and those went fabulously. The session right after the last little uh, training vlog thing that we filmed, I widened my stance out a little bit and this was more similar to how I used to squat. It felt immediately way stronger, less hip pain, less uh, little like shiftiness in my hips at the sticking point. So I've stuck with that and seen a lot of progress, a lot of uh, lessening in my average pain during squats. My high bar's gone up, my comp squat's gone up. Everything's feeling really good. I'm starting to feel uh, really good about training right now. I had a good day today. Comp squats got up to 585 or I think that's 265 kilos. Uh, I was using pound plates. I kind of like using the pound plate warm-ups because the jumps are a little bit less, get a little bit more, or a couple extra reps in on the way up. Feels good. Uh, so that's my rationale for that. It was also the only rack that was available when I came in. I managed to smack the safeties on the way down and still stood it up at about a seven and a half RP. So I was ecstatic about that. Um, I also had a couple scoops pre-workout today. So I'm friggin' fired up. Um, squats went super well, volume uh, got a little bit tough by the end. It was 510, four sets of four, or 230, 230 kilos. For sets of four, three sets of four there. Went on to do some comp bench, hit 165 again. Um, that felt better than the last time I hit 165, a little bit quicker. I had Jake calling pauses for me, um, trying to get used to, again, that feedback of reacting as opposed to trying to count my own pause in my head, listening for it instead. Specificity, competition prep. Uh, did some volume there, hit 151. Yes, I used the tiny little chips for my bench press because slow progress is better than no progress. Uh, so I hit 151 for a set of four. I hit 143.5 for a couple sets of four after that. Then I wanted to do some dumbbell bench. And again, use the chippers. Come at me, bro. Uh, 102 and a half per hand, dumbbell bench uh, for a set of 10 there. Those felt pretty good, starting to get pretty challenging. Um, I know my shoulder stability. I noticed my arms kind of lock out at different places throughout, so that's something I'm trying to work on. I'm trying to be a little bit more stable, a little bit more symmetrical throughout that movement, but so far so good, it feels really good. Uh, and I had a sick chest pump for question of the day. So before we get to sumo deadlifts today, guys, we're gonna take a question of the day. And this one is rather relevant because it's about the sumo deadlift. So we had a question from uh, this guy's username or girl's username is just a colon with a capital I or L. So it's like a little face thingy. So I don't know what to call you, but question from blank uh, asking about whether or not there is any inherent pain in the hips or adductors when switching to sumo. Um, and how to, you know, sort of open your hips up to prepare for the sumo uh, if you've never done it before. So switching to sumo for me made a lot of sense. It was really easy to kind of transition over. Um, I didn't really run into any issues. My quads got a little bit overworked from switching to sumo. Uh, the first block that I did sumo was five, four or five days a week squatting, four or five days a week deadlifting, um, and just sort of a baseline of volume throughout the entire week. So my quads got really, really tight and my knees hurt and ached after, um, but I just got some massage therapy to kind of work with that. And over time, I think more than anything, accumulated, or sorry, not accumulated, became accustomed to the volume. So I think that's the number one thing, is if there is any issues, if there are any issues, sorry, uh, just give yourself time to get accustomed to it and to uh, get used to doing the volume. If you're switching over and you do find there's some discomfort or some pain, 
then maybe switch over half your volume to sumo to start off with. Do your secondary movement in the week if you're doing second movement uh, as conventional still to give yourself a little bit of easing into it. You know, slowly ramp up the volume as you switch over to a new movement pattern. Uh, and things like that can go a long ways to avoiding running into those issues. Another couple things, if you're having trouble getting into position, uh, first off, go watch the sumo video that we did on Omar Isif's channel. I went really into depth on sort of how to find your stance. Basically, not everybody's gonna be super comfortable with their toes on the plates. Regardless of conventional wisdom saying, oh, you need to maximize leverages, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that, blah, 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 it's not, it's not a game of min-maxing. A lot of times it's trying to find a comfortable position where you're still strong. You look at Ed Cohen, prime example, barely outside of shoulder width with his sumo stance, pulled world records that stood for, I don't even know, 10, 15 plus years. Um, so find a position that you're comfortable with. Don't worry about whether wide might be more optimal. Um, as well, in terms of mobility and exercises that can help you prepare yourself to pull sumo, any sort of static stretching for the hips, just basic, basic stuff. Uh, pigeon pose is one that I really like. I just kind of put my leg up on a bench. Maybe Dylan will insert footage of me doing that earlier right here, but maybe not, so don't count on that because I do that all the time and then Dylan doesn't put it in and I look like an idiot, but anyways. Um, so pigeon pose or pigeon stretch is one that I really like as well as honestly just pull yourself into position with like 135 or 95 or 70 kilos or whatever on the bar. Just pull yourself into position and hold. If it feels like a stretch, hold yourself there for a while. Hold yourself nice and upright, figure out your back angle and then don't deadlift. Pull into position multiple times and that's probably the best way to ready yourself to deadlift and to figure out what you need to stretch. If you pull in and your hip flexors feel like they're binding up, try some half kneeling lunge stretches to stretch your hip flexors a little bit. You can kind of be intuitive with trying to figure out what you need to work on by just pulling yourself into position and feeling what is tight. Uh, it's, it's, it sounds simple, it's not really. Sometimes it involves a lot of troubleshooting, but for me to give a general recommendation on how to prepare yourself to switch over to sumo, that's what I would say. Um, uh, I've heard the same thing said by uh, Tim Thibodeau and Bryce Lewis, which I think is where Tim got it from, I don't know. But basically, pull yourself into position. Get ready for sumo pulling, find your tension, release. Pull yourself in, find your tension, release. Uh, I have a number of clients that come in and are pretty tight to start off with. I have them do that to get ready for sumo deadlifting. And Nine times out of 10, that's it. That's all you need to do is just pull in until you can find a good position and you're a little bit more comfortable and do a couple extra warm-up sets. That's it, no sexy answer, no quick fixes, just work on it. And with that, I'm gonna go do some sumo deadlifts right now. Did some competition deadlifts after that. 347 and a half kilos, up two and a half from what I pulled in Montana. Still feeling really good. Uh, starting to feel a little bit snappy, a little bit more comfortable a little bit smoother off the floor. Still maybe not as good as I have in some of the past training cycles, but given that I'm doing suited deadlifts on my second day and preparing for an equipped deadlift only meet at the same time, pretty happy with how my raw deadlift is coming along. That moved really well, caught it about, called it an eight RP, and then pulled three sets of four at 275 and a half kilos. And again, really focusing on letting all the tension go between reps, so I'm having to practice really pulling in, creating all the tension every single rep to make up for the fact that my secondary day is equipped. So lots of focus on that bottom range of motion, starting the bar off the floor, and it seems to be paying off so far. So if you wanna get faster off the floor, focus on making your reps harder off the floor. Be more purposeful in your training. Think about how you're lifting versus the adaptation that you want. Think about it. Man, that pre-workout. Um, last movement of the day today was some snatch grip, stiff legged deadlifts. And those are on the up and up, still pretty comfortable uh, in terms of the hip, it being a conventional pattern. A lot of times that can be problematic for me, but uh, these are feeling pretty good. Only up to, I think, 110 kilos today, so nothing spectacular there, set of eight. Um, but everything feels good, is moving good, feels smooth, so pretty happy with that. Uh, we have some more samples on the way right now of the new apparel we're gonna be launching. We got some super, super awesome stuff that I'm really excited about. When we get it, I promise we'll show you, and then you guys can get your own. That's it for me today. 
Hopefully we'll be back with some equipped deadlifts uh, and some of my day two next week. And we're getting pretty close to these meets. So I don't know, that's exciting. I'm excited, are you excited? Anyways, we'll see you guys in the next video. Like, subscribe, comment. Questions of the day, we need them, give them to us. What do you wanna know? We'll see you guys in the next video.